Hello everyone, this is Logan from 515R, and I'd love to share with you all our approach to the Engineering Notebook, which has helped us win 11 Excellence Awards and one World's Design. So, the most important thing in the Engineering Notebook is the rubric, which you can find on the REC's Guide to Judging. This is basically the judge's checklist of everything that really matters in the notebook and what will be graded on. So, the big ticket item is the actual build of the robot, the design process of identify, brainstorm, select, build, and test. And because this is so important to not only explain the process, but also explain it multiple times, we try to make it as easy as possible in our notebook to find this information. So you can see uh, one starts on page 81, identify, brainstorm, select, build, test. And so the judge would know that on page 81, if I can go to it, that they can start grading this section of the rubric and follow through for basically the remainder of the design engineering process. Select and plan, build, and test solution. And one thing to note is that our notebook isn't the perfect solution. In fact, it's pretty off because the build section completely missed the uh, steps to actually build the robot. And we realized this about halfway through the season and fixed it in our second notebook. Uh, so we actually have the steps to build the robot. Uh, so we don't just jump straight from CAD to build, which uh, wasn't the case in real life, but shouldn't be the case in the notebook. Anyways, so moving on to the time management. So basically, part of the rubric judging is how you budget your time. So if I go to handy dandy tab, we have our Gantt chart right here which basically lists out how long we have for the build, the program, and improve. I highly recommend this method because not only does it look cool, it's also pretty, pretty quick to make. So it's very well worth the time. And uh, it gives a clear overview of how long to spend on each section of the robot. Well, not each section, but each phase. Um, and yeah, for us, we basically redid the Gantt chart at the start of each design cycle. So once we were done with the first robot, we recreated it for the second robot. And then once we were done for the second, we did it for the third. And on our third robot, which is the December fix for the uh, build steps, we also added... Oh, here they are. Uh, monthly goals, which is basically just the things that we want to cover in a certain month. And this is more clear in our table of contents, just so not only can you see the Gantt chart clear and center for the judges, but also the monthly goals. So it gives that extra layer of uh, simplicity for the judges to basically find the information, but also just that the information exists in general is really nice. So the other thing to budget is the resources. And the way that we approached it at the start of the season, I believe it's on page eight, here we go, is listing everything out front and center before building the robot. So this is our competitions, our travel, and materials, which ended up being a lot more than what we expected, but um, we never talked about that, so the judges don't know. <laughs> but basically, this is our projection. And then we don't talk about budget for the rest of the notebook. I don't recommend that way. Uh, what I recommend is uh, having something for each subsystem instead. So how many parts it takes to build a section of the robot or how much does a section of the robot cost in general. And we actually did a version of that. If I can get to it. Here we go. Uh, that basically lists out our drivetrain, our delivery, our intake, and our roller parts. And that just fixes the budget problem because it is a check mark in the rubric. And make sure that you get as many points as possible. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is getting those check mark checks boxes uh, fixed. So, uh, 
if you don't mind me switching over to the digital format that we went with, we wanted to make it as as a written note written notebook feeling as possible. So we bought a written notebook, like uh, what's it called? A composite notebook, which basically just has all these grid lines. It has all these shenanigans like page number, continue to signatures. And then we just taped over our digital notebook pages. And so you get that first impression and just the weight of each page of a written notebook, but it's just straight up digital. And another way that we do it, or another way that we give that written notebook feeling is by signing each corner of, well, signing the side of each thing that we tape into the notebook. So you can see, this is the signature, this is the date, and it correlates with the date that we submitted it. And uh, if I separate these two real quick, you can see that it carries over from both sides. So if we were to take off this page and replace it, there would still be this little bottom of the LD left behind. And that would make the notebook look real suspicious. So the fact that uh, we can't take out the pages after they're submitted, they're locked in, uh, that gives the notebook more credibility. And just signing each page at the bottom in general gives it more credibility as well. Just giving that notebook written feel. And uh, another thing that I'd like to discuss, I talked about how we had the design process in our table of contents, but I didn't yet talk about these tabs, which is basically the same thing. You can see identify, and then the rest of these tabs are just the rest of the design process. But we also have tabs up here, and uh, each one of these blue ones links to a Gantt chart, so that covers the time management. And each one of these uh, yellow ones goes to the identify, so that it's another way of telling how many design processes we have. And just having these tabs makes it real clear not only where to find the information, but how much. So uh, I can't count, but there is a number of design processes that we went through, and you can just count each set of these to know how many, as well as for the second notebook. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to write them below. Oh, before I go. One more thing. So I said that this was a digital notebook, but I didn't say where we actually created the information. We created it from Google Slides. So basically each page is created on the, a slideshow and uh, the page dimensions are set up with page setup, which is just making sure it's 8.5 by 11 inches and the background is set by edit theme and it's just a background image in this layout and so that was nice to basically make this image unselectable uh and yeah we try to make it as much of a written notebook feeling as possible in fact this notebook is based off of 41091a's notebook which was my my old team and so giving it that, that feeling that it's written, even though it's not, sort of gives a, an impression to those judges who are more accustomed to the old system, which used to just be everything's written. Uh, gives a better impression, or maybe it doesn't. That's just our approach to uh, the notebook. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to write them below. And best of luck in Over Under.